It's that time of the week. Yes, this week's Cult Movie Show. Your weekly look at cult movies. Please welcome your hosts, Warren and Velvet. Yes, it is that time of the week. Uh, once again, welcome to Podcast 35 of the Cult Movie Show with myself, Warren, and of course, sitting with me virtually in the virtual studio, as always, is Velvet. How are you today, Velvet? I'm going quite fantastic. And again, we have an, uh, another awesome show. We have a cult classic actress here with us that's still active, and she's got a new horror film that she's going to be telling us about today. <laughs> this is Jewel Shepard. Introduce yourself. Yeah, Jewel. Hi, I'm Jewel Shepard. Hi, it's number 35. You told me it was going to be 100. I was your 100 uh, guest. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, we, 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 oh, we, my God. Another we, thing we, <laughs> I can't believe it. We, we had to, we had to, you know, <laughs> lie to get you on, you know. <laughs> exactly. I mean, now, now you've pretty much given us an oral contract that when we have our hundredth episode, you will come on. So look right. forward to that. <laughs> <laughs> I will come bearing no clothes in the standard tradition of good sour shower scenes. Right on, right. That's what we love here. <laughs> so, um, so yes. Look, well, welcome, um, Jill, and thank you so much for uh, for coming on. Um, I mean, you are. You, I mean, you have got such a resume sort of behind you in regards to films. Yeah, but behind. What are we making all these sexual? Well, <laughs> <laughs> you started it. <laughs> okay, I'll be really, I'll be very serious. <laughs> no, please don't, please don't. You, um, just be yourself. Just yes, be yourself. Be yourself. So we want to talk about the time I took off all my clothes in front of the Eiffel Tower. Yes. <laughs> wow. Oh, that was that. That would have been in, that would have been in Christina, wasn't it? <laughs> well, this is Christina, and it was about this heiress who uh, was such an adventurous adventuresome girl she went around the world and she would just take off her clothes and in front of the eiffel tower in front of the the pyramid of giza and just for about every guy and girl there was and uh, i got paid for that wow. well that's the main thing isn't it? <laughs> yeah that movie is actually the unauthorized biography of my life so thank you for portraying me so honestly in that film so i appreciate that <laughs> Well, one thing I have to, the, the one thing I did actually love about the movie, Christina, is the car you got to drive. Oh, that, that little, um, what was that it's thing? It's a Triumph, called? Triumph TR7, yeah. Right, and mm. I actually got one of those years later when I was, well, I should have been more uh, uh, knowledgeable about these things, but I still thought they were cute, and then I didn't realize <laughs> there were special tools that you had to be able to change a freaking tire. You just couldn't take off the tire. You had to actually use a tool. It's like, what? A tool? Yes. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah. Is- oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> So, the car should just come with a personal assistant to maintain the car for you. That's what they need to do. Just start selling a man with the car to take care of it for us, to do all that maintenance exactly, shit. Exactly. <laughs> and so I did find one or two. <laughs> <laughs> but the, um, but uh, I suppose of that, that, that time period, the film that you're probably most well remembered for is, of course, Return of the Living Dead. Um, which is a movie which has really written itself, you know, into into cult history. Uh, I suppose is is that the movie that you generally have fans ask you the most about? No, so fuck off and die. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you want me to continue on? Oh, oh I yeah, yeah. <laughs> Go oh, choke a chicken. <laughs> Jesus Christ, am I giving you all these classic lines that I only know because the fans have been coming up there with the poster to me, and they tell me what to sign. I'm, th- I'm sitting there thinking all these years later, oh, God, thank you for reminding me. It's fuck off and done. Go choke a chicken. <laughs> <laughs> no, and then, of course, I get the 8x10 glossy, and I think it's a scene of like, oh, just no, um, God, hold me tight to my character, my um, boyfriend in the movie, John Philbin. 
And uh, <laughs> they tell me no. That's when I said, go fuck off and die. I'm going, are you sure? Oh, okay. <laughs> 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 I've seen it 20,000 times. And, and, and then they go on to recite the entire movie line by line. Everybody's <sighs> play it out. And I sit there watching them. And I end up going, ah! You're so good. <laughs> <laughs> so, do, do, do you often find that you know many of these meet and greets and so forth are, are, are a bit sort of like uh, you, you're sort of just a bit over them, or I don't know. I'm just sort of curious. Well, no, these meet and greets lead sometimes to a really nice looking young man <laughs> who wants to show me his wares, and I'm more than you know accepting and, <laughs> <laughs> well, I do stiffy dro- jokes and telling him hey you're not a zombie today Woo-hoo. I don't know what the hell's in this movie I don't remember it was whatever years ago I can't say the actual words because I still try to say I'm on I've just turned 40 I've only actually admit this recently that I am now 40 okay we don't have to go anywhere on that one um, <laughs> but, um if there is, I mean, these young boys, they, they sit there and they, oh, wow, you're actually really hot. Oh, wow. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, gee, thanks. <laughs> yeah. Gee, thanks, asshole. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, but you know, um, you're, we don't want to talk only about Return of the Living Dead because you've done so much more. But I just want to throw this out there oh. that this is one of the few cult classic films with zombies in it that is highly rated on Rotten Tomatoes. It currently has a tomato meter of 91%, and there's not many people that can boast that achievement in their cinematic career. So congratulations, oh, wow. <laughs> Jewel. Wow. It's because That's pretty the awesome. zombies run fast in this movie. It's the zombies run fast. It's yes. not- I think you're right. Yeah, and they talk. They talk. And they talk, and there's a naked chick in the middle of this that just dances around naked. <laughs> what do you want with a zombie movies and naked chicks? And, you know, and then they get eaten. I mean, and you can take that anywhere you're going to go on that one. It's, well, in many, in many ways, uh, and then we'll move on from Return of the Living Dead, but in many ways it, it, it is that there's a lot that's in that in the, the latest movie, what is it, World War, well, I call it World War Z, but of course you guys call it World War Z. <laughs> World War Z. Um, yeah, the, um, <laughs> the fact that, yeah, you've got fast-moving zombies. You know, zombies have always been slow. So that movie really was a bit ahead of its time. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. You and know? A, bit, a bit ahead of everything. Uh, it had a, a, you know, we had to wait a year between the time we were hired to we actually shot that due to budgetary issues, and um, it was quite a, an adventure. And and I gotta honestly say, it was great to be in the early '80s at that time doing um, a real movie with real film, real cinematic rain, meaning seven rain trucks that get you wet, and you have to wait there for 20 minutes and and <laughs> you know actually see yourself in a movie theater that you know is much it's popular now at 91% as you say it bombed at the box office and if it wasn't for VHS uh, Mm -hmm. we would just be another zombie wannabe well, right. I, I think that's the thing about a number of the movies from the 80s that you were in is that they weren't necessarily huge commercial successes at the time, but they've gone on to now have huge fan bases, yeah. um, you know, of, of people who now absolutely adore these films, collect these films. Um, I mean, I mean, you were even in Zapped. You know, which even yeah. got, was so popular, it got remade. Um, <laughs> you know, it's, um, uh, you know, so, so all of these movies, you know, it, it, they may not have been great successes at the time, but now you've got this whole new generation of people who have fallen in love with them. Yeah, and I mean, Scott Bayo, who doesn't love Scott Bayo, who supports Donald Trump? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I was about to say Hillary Clinton may not love Scott Bayo, but... Um, <laughs> He zapped off my top and I got to wiggle my breasts in front of him. And there he was as a child. I used to put him in the uh, in my locker at school and go, oh, there's Chachi. <laughs> and then I had to <laughs> my breasts are in his face. And shit, dude, you are you a killer. Man, <laughs> talk about no vibe, nothing. It's like, what the hell happened to Chachi? You're possessed. You're possessed. Chachi. <laughs> oh, that is that is that is brilliant. That is absolutely brilliant. The but the other thing we have to say about you, of course, is that you're also an author. A what? 
an author. You have actually written um, uh, a couple of books. What? Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, see, people, she doesn't want you to know how intelligent she is. (laughs) Not only is she sexy, but she's intelligent and funny. those, Those things that involve words that are spelled correctly, like somebody doesn't like to spell their words correctly recently. Yes, um, yes. That kind of thing, books, you know, where you read and there's a story, a beginning, middle, and end, and not sad. I know. It, did, it doesn't use the word boom or sad or loser, you know. Right. I used at least four letters in my word. <laughs> at least. <laughs> Um, are, are those are those um, is it is it it's two books, isn't it? Is that is that right, Jill? It is two books, and I used to write for a series of different magazines called Premier Magazine, uh, Time Magazine. They used to be quite popular. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, right. Uh, details and Cosmo. I was quite the writer, the features writer, and. I would write about uh, stories. I would take these actors out, and I said, you know, I'm tired of listening to your shit like what we're doing right now. Let's go ride, um, you know, on a Ferris wheel, and let's talk there, or let's go let's go somewhere. Let's go down to the gang-infested area of the Crips and the Bloods in downtown L.A. Yeah, let's do that, and then let's talk about your career. So- <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So- yeah, was, I get the impression you're a thrill seeker. <laughs> thrill seeker, yes. <laughs> right on, right on. Now, the other thing too is that your um, uh, I absolutely love your YouTube channel, and I really say to everybody, subscribe uh, to your YouTube channel. It's brilliant. Are you on drugs? Yes. <laughs> there we have a truthful moment here of the virtual reality world well thank you very much I, i'm 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 I, i'm speechless I, I feel like one of those uh people are getting a award here no it's it's um whatever occurs to me and if i can remember how to hook it all up because i'm not really good at hooking everything all up but yeah so thank you very much uh some of it's good and some of it's just really crap but i put both up so you're I'm equally represented, crap and good. Oh, look, look no, I, 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 I really enjoy them, actually. They're, um, uh, yeah, no, it's, 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 and I really do suggest to people subscribe, uh, you know, so you'll get that alert. And, uh, yeah, it's great stuff. It, it really is great stuff. Oh, God, how much am I paying you for this? Uh, yes, yeah, so as they say, the check's in the mail. Just in gratitude. Just oh, in gratitude. it's in the mail, in your mouth, and I have a portion of the driveway. I got it. <laughs> now, of course, um, I mean, we've been talking about, you know, the 80s, but of course, you know, you are, you know, still, uh, you know, working and... Uh, I haven't died yet. I haven't no, passed. that's right. And uh, you've, of course, got a new movie out. Slasher.com. Don't go on a date without expecting a serial killer. <laughs> yes. Now, it's, uh, I believe it's out on, what What date is it again, Velvet? It's, um, oh, it's going to be March 7th. It'll be available for DVD release within the United States March 7th. So in a couple of days. March 7th. Beware of the Ides of March. Or is that the right one? Yeah. Is that a Caesar thing? <laughs> It's. I, I don't know, <laughs> but uh, but look, I uh, Velvet and I have both seen the trailer. We obviously haven't seen the movie as yet, but it looks really, really good, um, and uh, it's got some really good reviews. I believe it's won a few awards as well. Yeah, I'm up for award at Horror Hound in Cincinnati in two weeks uh, for mm. the best. Best female actress, and I sit there and I question, are they on drugs? But (laughs) I I am just thankful that the check cleared, that, you know, I get to show a different side of my personality. I got to do, I mean, you know, Hollywood is so much about smoke and mirrors. So whatever Mm -hmm. you think someone is, I mean, they may be a little bit of that. But there's wigs, there's, you know, eccentric makeup or hair or or uh, uh, dress, and in this particular case, I decided to make this woman a a very crazy woman, and I thought I did a really good job, and then people are saying they all thought I did a really good job, especially Woo-hoo. when I love to a spoon, like, over and over, and then they're, like, going, hey, that's not right. You don't do that to spoons. I'm thinking... <laughs> 
I'm thinking it was the only tool I had around me, and there it was. If, and then they go, well, shouldn't you wash that spoon? What the fuck? Really? <laughs> so I thought the whole flavor in the whole cooking afterwards is that, you know, the idea behind it was that you cook and you play around with yourself, and then you just serve it to your guests. I didn't realize there had to be something like you're washing it, and, and that's... <laughs> it, was it was it was it uh, was it a fun movie to uh uh to make to be involved in no are you kidding <laughs> no it's called how do i be the most psycho person that you could possibly be within a given budget of like we're talking zero dollars and how do i become this evil person and i got they gave me a spoon what the fuck do you do with a spoon <laughs> 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 Thinking, and I'm sitting there going, hey, I'm in a bathtub next. Can I bring the spoon with me? Oh, sure. <laughs> and then I'm sitting there thinking, can I put on more hair under my armpits? Because I think we should have the 70s come back. No, Jewel. No, not, <laughs> not that. No. It's like, no, we're tired of this runway shit or this bald crap. Let's put on a merkin. And <laughs> to say Missouri, especially Columbus, Missouri, was um, not uh, in favor of that. <laughs> right. I, yeah. I really am looking forward to seeing this. I, I, I really, really am. I, I, well, it you know. sounds like you acted your ass off in this, and yeah, we can't wait to I see it. I did act so. my ass off and my pussy off and my armpits off. <laughs> 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 because I, I think that's uh, one thing I, I think you you mentioned before when we were talking, um, Jill, was that um, you know you made the comment that so many people sort of start to overanalyze things so much in the sense that you know it, it's that idea. Did you come away from this believing that I was the person you were seeing? Oh, I believe you believe I'm the crazy. <laughs> yes. This interview, especially after what I said, people are going to go, hey, she didn't even have to act. She just, that's her. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's, but, that, but that's great because that's, that's the whole point, isn't it? It's, it's like if somebody walks okay, away the and they are, point, you know. That is it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's like the, if someone is, you know, convinced, you know, that, wow, you know, you you are that person on the screen, then, oh, then you, I'm you've, never gonna you have succeeded. someone knock at my door. But see, you don't understand. I have stalkers and they come through crashing through my actual fence here because they love me from being this this ducktail woman in, in, in Returning Dead. And I'm sitting there going, if you're going to compliment me, at least say you love Hollywood hot tubs where I look hot and sexy or at least the Knots Landing TV series where I look hot and sexy. What the fuck? You're complimenting me on a chick that wore blue hair, black <laughs> ducktail thing? And then, so this is the reason I like this character Mama. I play this crazy yeah. woman that sits there and, well, I like to play with a spoon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, I am dying. I cannot wait to see this movie now because now we've got so much anticipation built up around your performance with this spoon. <laughs> and there's not many people, again, that can say they've done this in their I'm cinematic career. <laughs> Nobody's done it with a spoon. That's what I kept on telling is that we, I want to be the first. I want to do all this <laughs> Fine did in that movie with John Waters where you know Divine ate poop. I said, Let me do it with oh. a spoon and they're going, Whoa, Jewel, wow, sorry, no. We have <laughs> Walmart and Best Buy. It's like, oh, oh yeah, that's where I get my check from. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> are there are there other roles that you know you would just love to do? Like this as an actress, you just say to yourself, I've never played character xyz and i so want to i so want to be emma stone and just winning academy award for a stupid ass movie called la la land <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh well yes um yeah i was always thinking about starting the show and sort of saying the winner is la la land oops sorry yeah that was that was an interesting that was an interesting nice uh, as uh, in was, fact you weren't there I was there it was not interesting I'm sitting there thinking there was definitely the dude who's the Price Waterhouse guy that sort of made it a little shady and so he sort of sits there and they're trying to make it that way I think it's the whole show I think the ratings were down they needed to spice it up everyone thought they were going to attack Trump and they didn't want that so they just tried to change it up and it was good finally finally 
what is it, 78, 98, 100 years later, that goddamn show finally became good. Yes. <laughs> it's, 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 it's something like that ever happened before, to your knowledge? No, it never I, happened. I don't think so. Yeah, no. That was weird. Yeah, and the thing is, the Academy Awards could be just down to, like, give out the best actor, best supporting actor, best actress, blah, 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 in the film, and we're done. Go away. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, no, I'm done. You see, that's where the politics and the money and let's stroke right. these movies and let's get all this stuff. From. So I don't like Hollywood like that. I just like it when it comes down to me and a spoon. <laughs> <laughs> Keep all the politics out of it. So, yeah, so you're, you're, you're not one of those who would support a lot of those political speeches and so forth at the <laughs> Golden Globes <laughs> and the Academy Awards. No. I would, however, support a free dress or a free, those nice free shoes. And that right. nice mm-hmm. thing from Tiffany, I definitely would support that. Give me a blue box, goddammit. Yeah. yeah totally. <laughs> Absolutely. So is there is there new stuff on the horizon for you, Jewel? Is there stuff which um, you're... I mean, I know you can't give away anything that might be a secret, but is, is there, there there's stuff that you've got in the works Oh God! Okay, I'm going to tell you a secret. Are you ready? For that? Oh yes, I'm. I'm yes. sitting down. I'm. I'm. I'm with bated breath. Yes, okay. this is a real secret, and it's coming up. So um, I've got this uh, project coming up. I've been working on it for a while. He's 29 and he's hot. <laughs> you know, I think she's <laughs> nice. All right, mm. paying for pizza, and I got the bed. Yeah. Oh, well, sounds now, good. that sounds like a project to be working on. Absolutely. <laughs> there you go. I am going to work. Well, no, I think he should be working on me, but I will look like I'm working on him. I will fake it very well because I have <laughs> lights and maybe I'll put on disco stuff and really turn them off. But then I'll have to work on it. <laughs> oh, God. The trials and tribulations of an actress. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so look, look. I, um, I. This might be a question you don't really want me to ask, or you just say, "Shut up, Warren." But do you have? Shut a f- up, <laughs> Shut up, Warren. But do do you have a favorite piece of work that you? Because I know that you, you you don't really like to. You don't really watch a lot of movies, do you? Like in your your no, personal like life. Like, oh my god, I hate them. No, what, hmm. what is the favorite piece of work? It's called not being in a movie theater. It's called not watching a movie. It's called being out in nature. It's called uh, uh, finding people in need. I, I volunteer for building wells in Cambodia um, for these farmlands. I, I like to do humanitarian kind of things. So that's what I like to do. I think that's what everyone should do as part of their life in addition to their jobs, their careers, their extra little whatever they want to do. I think you need to give back. So I'm very much into giving back, whether it be feeding the homeless downtown. I do that. So, yes, I am crazy in one aspect. And I guess I am fucking crazy, too, because who fucking volunteers for things anymore? Well, I, well it, it's one. It's I think one. That's great. Yeah, it's, I think it's that's one great. thing. I mean, your your level of public service is just amazing. It's outstanding, um, and and I and I agree that you know more people need to be doing more. It doesn't. Every little bit helps to help others, others in need, or to help the environment, the planet, you know, as a mm-hmm. whole. And, and I think you know that work that you do is just absolutely astounding. I I, I think it's it's magnificent. Well, That's I awesome. just really had a hack with me and God, Jesus, that for all the things that I've done wrong in my life, oh, my God, see, watch me. I'm building a well. See, see, see. <laughs> that's kind of a values kind of thing. But that's, yeah, that's neither here or there because then I get blown by a 20-year-old. So, okay. So it all makes life good. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> No, that's excellent. That's that. That is absolutely excellent. Well, look. Um, is there um anything that you'd like well, to? Well, we're going on more. We're past the freaking half hour. You told me we we're going to do the show for. Sorry, I think we're. <laughs> where, where are we? I'm, I'm not too sure. I'm not actually looking at the clock. It's um. It, no, I was going to ask. You know, is there anything that you want to you know let everybody know about? I mean, do we I have? Just- Sexual twenty year olds. I dig wells and I run with zombies. My God, what more do you want? <laughs> <laughs> no, do, do we you have any projects or social media that you'd like to plug, Jewel? Where can oh people God, find you? Where can your Jewel fans? Shepherd, Jewel <laughs> Shepherd. That's J E W E L S H E one P. 
A R D. Pardon me. Oh, I'm I'm starting to. Oh, God, I'm laughing so much. I'm starting to cough. Oh, my God. Um, Uh Oh, no, no, no. This this has been so much fun. um, But the other thing, too, is, of course, slash it. It's slasher.com. Asking questions. (laughs) 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 One other question. We're past the half hour mark. I really want to see those mechanisms in your virtual little reality dream room. Yes. And and she's got her uh, 29-year-old she's working on, so she needs to get back to that project. So we won't keep you too much longer, Jewel. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so look, remember, everybody, it's also slasher.com if you want to go and, uh, and obviously check out Jewel's new uh, film. So please do that. Um, look, Jill, it's, it's been such a pleasure having you on. It, it has really been. has. Yeah. You warned me. Oh, my God, ask me questions. You had to make me think. It's <laughs> 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 not my talk. Here it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, this, this has definitely been one of the funniest, the, the best little interviews we've done. I thank you so <laughs> much for coming on. As yeah. I said. I use these words little. I don't like these words little. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you so much for coming on, Jewel. You are definitely a treasure, and we've enjoyed talking with you. And we look forward to seeing what you do. Do you know I mentioned how much your lips are really like? I like them black and thick. And black. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> I was actually thinking of you when I was saying that, but that's okay. <laughs> Oh, look, thank you, Jill, so much. And uh, it was, as I said, absolute pleasure talking to you. And just, you know, you are welcome back any time. It was just, it's been so much fun. Number 100, baby, number 100. Yes, number 100. (laughs) We're we're going to book that in. We've got this recorded now. We're we're booking that in, number 100. Exactly. Book it, baby. Cool. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you so much, Jewel. No worries. Thank you, all right, we're just going to take a quick break and then we're going to be back with. I think everyone knows what's coming next. It's the mini movie review. Woohoo! <laughs> it's time to get excited, short film fans. It's mini movie review time. Yes, it is. Uh, one of the. What, it's definitely become one of my favourite little segments of the show, Velvet. The mini movie review. And uh, oh, I have to say first, Jill, okay, that, that was funny. That was funny, wasn't it? My, yeah. that, that, was, that, was, that, was, that was that was funny. Um, oh. Oh, I, I, I didn't know if it was a Monty Python sketch or if it was, uh, but it was. Uh, yeah, that was a that roller was coaster, wasn't it? Yeah, that it was, was, uh, it was fun. Ride. <laughs> that 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 was that was fun. Um, now, um, uh, yes. So our mini movie. What have you got for us um, uh, this week, Velvet? All right. This is an interesting mini movie. I actually saw this short film a couple of years ago. It came out in 2013. I actually saw it around when it first came out. And it's actually readily available on YouTube. But this is also the first time we're reviewing a short film that actually has a very well-known actor in it. So this short film is written and directed by Sherlyn Wong. And what's interesting about this as well is that an Irish whiskey company, Jameson Irish Whiskey, in association with Kevin Spacey's Trigger Street Productions, they basically they handpicked a couple of filmmakers, gave them a budget, and let them make a short film. And Sherlyn Wong was one of the people they selected, and she wrote and directed the short film called Love's Routine, and she even has a well-known actor in it, and that actor is Willem Dafoe. So... First off, I just have to say the beginning of this skit, did this make you feel a little nervous, Warren? Because I was a little uneasy when I first started watching this. I, I thought I was, I thought, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. I, yeah, yeah. I, I, it, was, it does make you feel a little bit uncomfortable as it starts, but it doesn't take very long, I think, for you to realize what's going on. Um, okay. it's, I, I don't know how you felt about that, but it's um, because there is a, a giveaway, obviously, towards the end about what is really happening. 
But I, yes. I, I, I'm going to put my hand up and say I actually twigged it before it happened. Okay, so I think a lot of people might actually figure it out before it happens, but I, most of the time when I watch almost anything, I try to really be really neutral and not form any opinions or guesses. So for this one, when they did full-on reveal what's going on in the short, I was surprised. But there are definitely, even before uh, the giveaway, there are clues, but they could mean a couple of things. So for me, when I very first saw this short, Willem Dafoe's character is named Barry. And Barry made me a little uneasy because I thought Barry quite potentially had bad intentions toward his female partner. So Barry has um, a girlfriend, possibly a wife, but a female partner in this. And she is... She's old. She's an old lady. And Willem Dafoe's not the youngest man on the planet, but there's definitely quite a few <laughs> years in age difference between the two. So the short starts off with Willem Dafoe very masterfully and carefully cooking a meal for this woman. He sets the meal down on, on the table in front of her, and she begins to eat, and he is not eating. And he says, I like to watch you eat. And then she begins to choke. So I honestly thought he was trying to offer. I was like, oh, my God, he's trying to kill this woman. <laughs> yes, that's what I thought. Uh, when I saw that scene, I thought, oh, that's where we're going. And then, but then a, 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 just a few minutes later, I thought, no, no, there's something else going to happen. And I think I know what it is. So Exactly. Yeah. So the short film runs just um, just under nine minutes, and as usual, we're being a little really vague on this one because we don't want to spoil the reveal for you, but I really like Willem Dafoe's acting in this because he comes across as a very nice guy, but there's something off about him, and you're like, something's not right. What is going on? So um, it shows him being very loving and towards this woman, doing, you know, just being very loving, very, being very sweet. But still, you just think something's not quite right. <laughs> and then one day, their normal routine, you know, he's always cooking for her, and they go to bed at the same time. They wake up together. One day, their routine gets thrown off track, and that's when you finally discover what's going on with Barry, Willem Dafoe's character in this short. So yes. I really like, I, yeah, I really like this short. Um, I can't say too much about it from my side because I don't want to spoil it, but what do you think about this short one? Oh, look, I really liked it. Um, I mean, he's fantastic, first of all. You know, I mean, he's, yeah. he's such a good actor. But it's shot very well. It's, it's actually very believable, even though, you know, th there's obviously not a lot of money uh, here. But it's, um, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's very believable. And I will just, I'm going to say this. This is a bit of a cryptic clue. 200 mm -hmm. years. <laughs> That's a cryptic clue, okay? So if people can work out from that, from other things that they – I'm just going to leave to that. That's a cryptic clue. I'm going to say no more. Um, okay. So um, I, I think that is pretty cryptic. I think a lot of people have no idea what I'm talking about. Some other people <laughs> think, are going to say, I, I, know. I know what you're referring to. Yes, <laughs> yes. Um, so uh, – but no, no, no. I really did like it. I, I thought it was very interesting. I liked the ending as well. I thought yes, the ending yes. was – was because uh, the ending is not actually the twist, the, the twist right. actually happens about two thirds of the way through, but right. the ending is actually really clever. The ending, I yeah. think, is, is actually really clever. Um, and uh, yeah, you'll think twice, maybe it's worthwhile having a look at the rubbish collections people put out from time to time. <laughs> you never know what you might find. Um, it's no, it, it's, 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 it's really good. I, I, I recommend this one. I, yeah, with, without doubt. Yeah, it's brilliant. Right. It and, really is good. And I have to say this about Willem Dafoe. He is pretty well known for choosing very interesting acting roles. And this short is another example of that. So 
he loves to play very <laughs> off the wall, unusual, strange, eccentric characters. And this is definitely goes into that category. So yeah, if Willem Dafoe's in it, you can be guaranteed to have an interesting storytelling experience. So loves routine. If you want to check it out, just uh, go to YouTube. You can go to James, excuse me, Jameson Irish whiskey is the name of the YouTube channel. So I'm not promoting the whiskey, but I am promoting the YouTube channel. Oh, I'll, promote, I'll I- promote the whiskey. It's very- <laughs> Very nice stuff. Oh, it's very okay, nice stuff. We well, Jameson Irish Whiskey, we are looking for a sponsor. So if you'd like to sponsor us, go ahead and give us a tweet or email us. Yes, okay, not, not, so. not, in, not in money. I will take it in bottles. <laughs> Uh, you know, I agree with you. I'll be happy to do the office, too, I have to admit. So, yeah, uh, check it out. Go ahead and subscribe to their YouTube channel. And check out this short Love's Routine with Willem Dafoe. And they actually have a whole series that they did of these in uh, 2012, 2013, and even 2014. So, And some of the shorts also have Uma Thurman. Adrian Brody, Kevin Spacey. So this is a really interesting to see short films that have actual A-list actors in them. So check it out. No, it's really good. Yeah, really highly recommend this one. So yeah, I like ooh, it. Yeah, no. So uh, all right. Well, it's probably time now for a full-on movie review, and um, we've got a couple coming, which is from a slightly different direction this week. So uh, stay tuned. <laughs> And we're back. Now, <laughs> we thought we might do something a little bit different this week. And uh, and that is that, look, we often talk about, we've talked about what, horror movies, zombie movies, <laughs> um, what else, you know, creature features, um, yeah. you, you name it. Obviously, you know, we've been talking about them. But we thought that we might do something a little bit different uh, this week. And... We thought we might talk about some films where live action meets animation. And uh, because there's been obviously a number of them and quite, you know, a few of them really are cult films now. Uh, so we thought, you know, why not uh, sort of, you know, talk about this? And uh, yeah. so uh, the first one that we're going to uh, mention this week is from 1971. And it is a Disney movie. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I think it's the first time we've ever done a Disney film. Would that be yeah. right, I think? Yeah. Um, yes, and it true. is Bed Knobs and Broomsticks. Um, now, this, of course, is, uh, as we said, uh, a movie where live animation and animation uh, intermix. So we're not just talking about uh, movies where... Uh, there might have animated sections in the movie. It's actually right. where the live action, the real actors, are actually interacting with animated characters. Um, and so, first cab off the rank, as we said, is Bed Dobbs and Broomsticks from 1971. Now, um, before we do a, a, a bit of a rundown, what's your sort of thoughts, Velvet, on this type of genre? I would love to see more of this type of genre. I feel especially now with our capabilities with CGI and the way animation has become so 3D, even without 3D glasses. Um, I think really the whole science and art and technology of integrating live action with animation, if they come up with the right script and just, you know, characters that we actually care about that are well developed, I mean, they could really make some instant cult classics here and now. So I absolutely love this genre genre of filmmaking and i wish there was more stuff like this because a lot of the stuff is actually older it's not done that often anymore i feel well that's that's very true isn't it i mean we've had ones it isn't uh space jam mm-hmm. um you know and mary poppins although that's going mm-hmm. back obviously quite a while but this one bed knobs and broomsticks um is was actually meant to run off the success if you like of mary poppins and it wasn't by any means um, as successful as Mary Poppins, uh, even though Disney actually hoped that it was going to be. But 
like a lot of cult movies, it, of course, was a sleeper. Um, it took mm-hmm. time for this movie to actually gain the following it does. And now this movie is treated a little bit like Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. It's a sort of movie that adults will actually sit down and watch. And, um, <laughs> you know, and because there are some extraordinarily funny scenes in this, which we will get to, um, even though most of it is just generally a kid's film. Film, I suppose, or not really kids film, family film, I suppose you would there say. There you go. But yeah. there are some elements to this which are absolutely hilarious. So, um, but look, anyway, it basically, our film is set in the Second World War, 1940, uh, during basically the real dark days for Britain. Uh, Europe had been conquered by the Nazis. Britain was, and along with its Commonwealth, was basically standing alone against the Nazi hordes. And um, during that time, children from London, which was being obviously blob- uh, bombed, uh, which they refer to as the Blitz, uh, were being shipped out to country towns um, to live with families so they would be safe uh, during the bombing. And it follows the story of three orphans, uh, three orphan kids who are sent out to uh, live with a woman called Miss Price, who is, of course, played by Angela Lansbury. Now, they very quickly find out that Miss Price is, in fact, a witch, or a witch in training, we really should say. She's not a very successful witch. Um, You know, she's not very good at it. Um, Anyway, they find out about this. Now, um, Miss Price is taking a correspondence course in witchcraft, (laughs) yes, (laughs) <laughs> Which is, I, I think, just was brilliant. And uh, I love from, that. from a gentleman called Professor Emilius Brown. Um, now, Emilius Brown ends the correspondence uh, course, a bit like Trump University, I suppose. And um, yeah. and then basically, sorry, I should have said that. Um, and then, <laughs> and, uh, and uh, <laughs> although both the schools are probably about as legitimate as each other, actually. But anyway, anyway, shut up, Warren, shut up. <laughs> Shut up. I'm hitting myself. Um, um, anyway, so um, uh, now that the kids realise that uh, Miss uh, Miss Price is a witch, they decide that they're going to hunt down Amelius Brown so she can find the final spell that she's looking for, uh, which oh, I've forgotten what it was called now, but it basically makes objects come to life, clothing, shoes, fry pans, yes. whatever. Yes. And she believes that this spell could be used to stop the Nazis. Nazis. Uh, so anyway, they uh, create a magical flying bed, which is just the coolest form of transport. It's this big old <laughs> double um, double bed, and they fly to London to track down Amelius Brown. Now, of course, they do track him down. Uh, he is quite astounded to find out that the spells he's been selling actually work, um, and um, and they all team up, the three children, Miss Price and uh, uh, Amelius Brown, to try to track down this very last spell. And it means that they have to go to these fantasy worlds, uh, which are ruled by animals. And, of course, that's where they interact with all the animation. And then after that, they will then use the spell to try to stop the Germans, which they do do very, in a very, very funny and interesting way. So anyway, oh, I'm out of breath. What did you think, Velvet? Oh, uh, I had never heard of this movie, Bed Knobs and Broomsticks. I don't know how I missed this, never heard about it till you mentioned it, suggested it for the show. And I was so entertained and delighted by this movie. I absolutely adored it. I had so much fun watching this. So I'm glad that now I'm aware of this movie. It is a bit dated. Um, it's, but it's a really interesting mix of not only, as you said, family fun entertainment, but there are, um, there's war culture in here. You know, it's talking about, you know, people in Britain being, being bombed and having to, you know, house orphans to get them out of London because London's being bombed and they're, you know, having to possibly fight off, you know, Nazis and <laughs> Germans coming in and I was just like wow there's a lot of adult themes in this but it's really fun and lighthearted 
And even towards the end when they are actually, you know, using magic to fight the Germans, it's really funny, really well done, really entertaining. I had so much fun watching this. Well, I think, too, the – I don't want to give away the ending of, of the right. movie, but the, right. um, the special effects for 1971 are pretty astounding. I actually think, um, you know, the, they just, I, I can't give it away. I can't say what they actually I, do. I but- know, exactly. No, I agree. The very end part, that's, I agree. It's very well done, especially for that time. The animations, like I said, it's a bit dated, but it's still quite good for 1971. Um, the music, I wasn't crazy about the music in this movie, but I loved the dancing. There was a lot of dancing in this movie. There's this just one really long dance sequence of different dance styles, different cultures coming together and dancing in the streets. And that was like my favorite part of the movie. It was just so fun to watch. Oh, yes. They go to Portobello Road in London and uh, yes. to try to hunt down this book, which has the last <laughs> um, um, a bit of the spell in it. And uh, and while they're there, it turns into, of course, in true Disney fashion, a big song and dance <laughs> number. But the interesting thing about it is that it's an homage to uh, Britain at that point in time, we get to see the, um, you know, all the people who were living through, you know, the blitz, through the bombing. Mm-hmm. We get mm-hmm. to see, you know, people who are living in absolute poverty, along with people who are trying to dress themselves up and look good, even though life has gone to absolute shit. But right. the other thing, too, is that they pay homage to all of the Commonwealth countries, well, not all of them, but a number of them, who yes. were there standing by Britain. Because, yes. of course, everyone forgets in 1940, Britain wasn't actually standing alone. There was Canada, Australia, mm-hmm. South Africa, New Zealand, India, mm-hmm. Kenya, mm-hmm. you know, with all these countries who were standing along with Britain. And they pay homage to all of that. We see Indian soldiers mm-hmm. We see yes. a New Zealand soldier. We see Scots. We see an Australian. Mm-hmm. Uh, we see an Australian do his little dance number. Um, <laughs> you know, they, they they pay homage to the Commonwealth, which I thought was a really nice little thing. Yeah, um, I love that part. You know, I love um, that part. And I suppose the war was still in 1971. I mean, there were a lot of people. Yeah, you know, the, the memories were still fairly fresh for a lot of people. Oh, absolutely, definitely, definitely. You know, that's the. I mean, I mean, sure, those memories last a lifetime. If you were actually there during the Blitz and having to deal with rations and losing family members and friends and acquaintances to you know the the horrors of war. I mean, yeah, that those memories last a fucking lifetime. So yeah, for them to make this movie that's supposed to be you know basically that's supposed to be taking place in the forties, but they made it thirty years later. I mean. Yeah, totally. Those are definitely fresh memories. And this, yeah. <laughs> and now, the other thing, too, is if you watch this on the um, the latest version, which is available, I'm mm-hmm. sorry to say you're going to see the wires, okay? Um, because <laughs> when the movie is cleaned up so much, you get to see the wires. Um, you know, <laughs> it's a bit like watching Thunderbirds, you know, the original TV series on Blu-ray. <laughs> You get to see all the wires, so um, so you know that's just uh, you know a, a that, sign you know, of the that, times. This movie's lucky though because it's made during that time where we accept that that's okay. Like today, that's unforgivable. We're like, no, you can't have wires. You have to erase the wires because we have the technology. But back then, they were doing what they could with what they had, so they get a pass on the wires on this one. Oh, I think so too. <laughs> I, I, I think so too. The um, uh, the other thing too is that, uh, for instance, when this movie was uh, released, it was. As I, as I think we said at the very start, it wasn't really a great success. In fact, it actually mm-hmm. lost it lost money. So it didn't mm-hmm. do the Mary Poppins thing, you know, that they were hoping. Because um, they were hoping it was going to be a huge Christmas blockbuster. And mm-hmm. unfortunately, it didn't turn out uh, that way. But over the years, people have started to fall in love with it. And um, just to give you an idea, the original edit that went out in 1971 was 100 17 minutes it was then cut back Mm. because they thought it's too long wow maybe that's the the problem and it was cut back to 96 minutes like so it was a little bit more acceptable but then in its re-release in 2001 uh where it was all cleaned up and all the rest of it and and they realized that this had now gone in it's written itself into cult history it was then re-released at 139 minutes with mm-hmm. extra footage and so forth being thrown back in. So, you know, this has wow. really written itself into, into cult history. 
And yeah, I, and actually the version I watched was actually um, almost two hours long, like an hour and 57 minutes, like almost two hours long. So it's there's a lot of content in there, and it's, it's, it's fun to watch. It doesn't feel like a long movie. It's very nicely paced. Oh, a- a- absolutely. Uh, the, the only thing I would... Uh, that was maybe a little bit wrong with it is that um, uh, Professor Emilius Brown. Now, without giving too much away with it, he will at some stage in this movie have to do his, you know, his time in the army. Okay, I'm not going to mm-hmm. say any more about it because, of course, every, right. everybody, of course, did. You know, the country was about to be invaded. Everybody had to. Right. But the mm-hmm. thing is that he's probably honestly too old. <laughs> to to do that, um, it was played by um, he was played by uh, was it David um, uh, um, Tomlinson? Uh, David, yeah, you got it. David and uh, yeah. and he really was, I think. Uh, well, he was over thirty five years old. Put it that way when they made this right. movie. So <laughs> yeah, he would have ended up in the Home Guard. He wouldn't have actually have ended up in the regular army. Um, and we get to see, although there's a great little homage to the Home Guard in this too. Um, yeah, you know, Velvet, yeah. where we get to see all the old men. You know, the men in their sixties and seventies. You know, mm-hmm. old World War One veterans or even earlier who have, you know. And they still want to serve. They still want to serve. They're still patriotic and still want to do their duty, even though it's kind of like, no, you can, you know, you, you can sit this one out, Grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and, yeah, and they're there and we see them, you know, and, and we see them in mixtures of uniforms. Like some yeah. are in uniforms, some are just in their work clothes, some have got rifles, some are carrying pitchforks, yeah. you know. So it was, <laughs> uh, it was, uh, I thought that was really quite nice that, you know, they like they that. made their little homage like to that. the Home Guard because they were men who uh, are often overlooked at this point in time in history. They mm-hmm. did so much for their country and got really nothing back in regards to rewards. I mean, they right. had normal jobs during the day. You know, they would, you know, run the bakeries, they'd work in the factories, and then they'd stay up most of the night guarding the coastline or guarding things, and then they'd get three hours sleep and they have to go back to work again. You know, they Whoa. did an amazing job. Um, and uh, if you ever want to look at a very humorous look at the British Home Guard during the Second World War, check out a TV series called Dad's Army. Absolutely hilarious. Um, but, of course, a great tribute uh, to um, uh, to the Home Guard. So, uh, so yeah. So, no, look, I, I love this film. And, and the one thing I, I will tell you, Velvet, and everybody mm-hmm. listening, is that in my family, we have a bit of a tradition with this movie. And that is that I saw it for the first time with my father. And we were rolling around in hysterics <laughs> at a certain <laughs> scene in this movie, which we'll get to in just a sec. And... Um, I then did the same thing with my daughter. I introduced my daughter to this movie. And when she was young, we did the same thing. We were rolling around on the floor in hysterics. And I, and I'm hoping that she will pass it down the line as well, you know, as, as a bit of a a family (laughs) tradition. But the scene I'm talking about is the soccer match. Yes. Now, what did you think <laughs> yes. of the soccer match scene, um, Velvet? Yes, I enjoyed that a lot. Um, so that was the animated part of this movie. So because of Miss Price's magic, they end up in a cartoon world looking for a magic spell. They're looking for some special words. And they've heard that the king of the special land where all of the inhabitants are how would you say humanoid animals? Yes. Yeah. They're talking animals that wear clothes and all the rest of it. Yeah. So the king lion, uh, like it's a lion, I mean, yeah, like the lion king, but the king is a lion. And what cracks me up about him is when he talks, he uses pirate speech. He's like, Arr, mate, yes. hey. yeah. I'm just like, okay, all he needs is a fucking parrot and an eye patch and a peg leg and he's good to go. But wait, he's a lion. What the fuck? No, it's a really funny. Um, I, I enjoyed that a lot. Um, a lot of those um, animated characters actually looked really familiar to me, which was interesting. Interesting, And I'm like, you know, I've seen these characters pop up here and there in other animations and other movies or pop culture nods and stuff. And I never knew where they came from. And I'm like, OK, here's where they're from. They're from bed knobs and broomsticks. They're from this movie. But yeah, uh, just car- animals you would never think of. Oh, 
and they were playing soccer. They weren't playing football. They actually said soccer in this movie, which I thought was interesting. Yeah, so I was like, oh, they're, I was like, huh, that's interesting. I think soccer. that yeah, I think the reason they did that is because it's Disney. It's still technically an American movie. Even Got though, it. even though the cast in this was were all British, which is interesting, because I think everyone yeah, forgets right. Angela Lansbury is actually a Brit. She's not an American, you yeah. know. She's actually oh, British. Yeah. Um, so, um, yeah. you know, and uh, was it uh, Roddy McDowell plays the the yes. priest before he mm-hmm. would go on to uh, you know become uh, the very famous Cornelius in, uh, uh, of course, in uh, Planet of the Apes, uh, but. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the cast in this are actually, actually all uh, all British, and the interesting thing too is that the three kids weren't actors, and they made this film, and that was basically it. They didn't go on oh. to to do more movies. It was just a a bit of a one off. Oh, interesting! I didn't realize that. Yeah, Angela Lansbury in this is really, I really enjoyed her. I thought she was just really pretty, really great, really believable. Um, And she's been acting forever. My God, she's been the Manchurian Candidate, and then now she's in Bedknobs and Broomsticks. Of course, we know her from Murder, She Wrote. Murder, She (laughs) Wrote. Right? That's where she's popularly known for in the United States. But it turns out she's also currently in filming Mary Poppins Returns, and she's playing a character called the Balloon Lady, and it's slated to release next year in 2018. So Mary Poppins Returns, Angela Lansbury is going to be in it, and she's currently 91 years old, and this woman wow. is still acting. Yes, yeah, she's still acting, so good for her. Well, she, is, she, of course, um, in fact, I mean, she's sort of, uh, I mean, she's still younger than I think a lot of people are going to remember her from Murder, She Wrote, obviously. Um, yeah. But a lot of people, I think, because there's so many people today who have never seen Angela Lansbury's early work. And I right. think a lot of them don't realise just how gorgeous she was when she was in mm-hmm. her in her 20s. Um, at yes. The, um, and if you want to see a very funny, really funny Angela Lansbury – there is a movie that she did with Danny Kaye, um, which is called, um, oh, I hate it when this happens, Brain Freeze, um, uh, The Black Fox, or um, uh, I can't remember now. It's like, you know, the vessel with the pestle has the pellet with the poison. Um, if you, um, <laughs> and it was, I'm sorry. Oh, it, it, oh, look, 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 I'll, um, uh, we'll put it up on Twitter later if I can remember it before the end of the show. Um, I'll just say, but she plays the princess in that movie and she is hilarious because she falls in love with Danny Kaye and it is just absolutely hilarious to watch. So, um, but anyway, we are digressing um, absolutely so much. But, <laughs> but, yeah, but it's interesting that you said, you know, they say soccer because it's interesting yes. because the, the one of the kids, he's there and he's sort of saying, oh, ref, that's dirty football. So it's like he's saying football, but everybody else is saying soccer. <laughs> so I, I'm, I'm convinced that just must be a Disney thing because it's – Technically, an American movie, as we said, but uh, but anyway. But the other thing too is mm-hmm, that makes sense. Yeah, that totally makes sense. But there even if, even if you don't yeah, want I was, to, I was like, I just yeah. Oh, I just sorry. That. I was like, oh, they're saying soccer. I was like, I was like, oh, that's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> but what I was going to say is, even if you really sort of say, uh, Warren and Velvet, no, we don't really want to sit through two hours of a, a Disney film. Okay, fair enough. But I'll tell you what, even if you don't get onto YouTube and just type in soccer match. From bed knobs and broomsticks. Because <laughs> seriously, it is hilarious watching these animals play soccer. It is just because the it's a it's a soccer match with no rules. So they're biting each other. They're doing all. It's just absolutely hilarious. Uh, yeah, it and, is. And the and every player is a different animal. So there's a kangaroo. There's a cheetah. There's a crocodile. A hippopotamus. A gorilla. An elephant. <laughs> you know. Uh, so it's just it's 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 fantastic it's it, it's so it much was, fun and like they had what they had the blue team and i guess the yellow team or the blue team the red team and it cracked me up because every time the goalie for the blue team was the elephant and it would like catch the soccer ball of course with its trunk but the way it would like just like go into his face and then he'd blow it out <laughs> i don't know that kept cracking me up i'm just like what? The, the animation was really cute oh, what, what, what one of my funny i uh, certainly one of the funniest things is when the ball gets hit and the uh the warthog 
goes to uh, try to, you know, head the ball, as you do in soccer, and um, <laughs> and it gets stuck on his tusks, so he's got the two tusks with a ball in between. So the keen lion walks up, grabs him by the hind legs, and starts pushing him like a wheelbarrow. A wheelbarrow. Down the, down the, I mean, it's, it's, I mean it's, it's just, it's absolutely hilarious. And, and then the hippo swallows the football, and so they're all there kicking him in the stomach, trying to get the football oh, out. It's just... Yeah, poor guy. Oh, oh and... Yeah. and, um, yeah. and yeah, and it's I love hilarious. And the, I really like that. Oh, and the way the medics on the side of the football pitch were vultures. Oh, oh, they're vultures? <laughs> yeah, that cracked me up. They were vultures. I was like, oh, my goodness. Uh, oh, there's a uh, there's a couple of animals in this movie we got to talk about. Okay, there's you'll see white rabbit a couple of times throughout this movie, and I absolutely love rabbits, and I love white rabbits, and this was a white rabbit with the pink eyes or red eyes. Oh, so cute. And that was one of uh, uh, Miss Price, played by Angela Lansbury. That was one of Miss Price's go-to spells. Anytime somebody annoyed her, she would turn him into a white rabbit. <laughs> but it would be a real rabbit, not a cartoon rabbit. And then, okay, but let's talk about cosmic creepers. Okay, so she's a oh, witch. She has, to have, she has to have a black cat. That was the most awful-looking black cat on the planet. That cat looked like roadkill. It looked so terrible. It just looked so messed up. And it was like, okay, sometimes it was a real cat, and I guess sometimes it was like a animatronic or something. I'm not sure. There was something wrong with that cat. <laughs> I, I, I believe that when when the cat like would run across, like run up the stairs or something like that, they use a real black was, cat. But but right, when it's right. when it's sitting there doing stuff, it's animatronic. Oh, um, so so awful. so so it's it's a bit like it, it. What is it? Salem from? Uh, do you remember the TV show uh, yes, Sabrina, Sabrina the Teenage Witch? <laughs> so it's a bit like Salem. It's an a- animatronic um, cat. So it's and, right. and it's, but it's, this it's, one looks yeah. like roadkill. I know. <laughs> but I, I, I love the way too. Horrendous. It wasn't. It wasn't really her cat. The cat was sent to her in the mail by <laughs> Professor <laughs> Amelia's Brown. <laughs> And that's actually really funny too. So <laughs> you know, so she's doing this correspondence course in from the school of witchcraft, and so every you know, I guess week or so, she's receiving a new lesson. She's practicing it, getting her ingredients together, and all that. And so, like, but then, like, they cancel the course unexpectedly, and she's like, "Well, I have to talk to Professor Doctor Brown right away." So she goes to London to see him. And you find out that he's basically a snake oil salesman. He's a swindler. He's a con artist. It, yes. it, just, it just cracks me up when you first see that he's got this suitcase full of bullshit and he's trying to trick people out of their money and he's selling them garbage and just, it's just like, it just, it's a funny scene to me for some reason. But it's, but it's also <laughs> great because he gets turned around, you know, like at first yes. when, when he realizes that she can do real magic, she is actually a witch. And, um, the, uh, uh, and of course, his first thoughts are how to make money out of this. How can he? How can he turn this to make a buck? But then, as the movie goes on, of course, he changes. And um, I, I mean, I will. I don't think it's going to give too much away. I mean, we get a bit of a love story develop. Okay. Oh yeah, of course. So yeah. if you imagine, we've now got a single woman, a single guy, and three orphans. Well, I. Guess you can <laughs> guess where it's going to probably end up. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, but um, but the uh, um, uh, but the thing is, he changes, and and there's that great scene when he's at the railway station and he's going to run away. He wants to have mm-hmm. nothing to do with this, and he's sitting there, and you can hear his thoughts ticking over, and he's sort of mm-hmm. saying, you know, Amelius, for the first time in your life. You were needed by somebody. You Aww. could have done something. And and he suddenly right. realizes he's got to go back. You know, he has to go back. Right. Right. This movie is very cute. It really warmed my heart. I actually got a little tear in my eye from this movie. I was really touched by it. So, yeah, if you love stuff like um, Mary Poppins, if you love these kind of, you know, mixed genre films, where, or I should say mixed animation, mixed live action films, you definitely need to see this one. Um, I'm not crazy about the music in this one. There are, I counted about five songs where they actually sing, and I can't remember a single one of them. So the songs... 
weren't like Mary Poppins where they're very catchy and they stick with you and you like to hear them over and over again. These were just kind of part of the movie. You know, they just, the songs didn't really do it for me, but there's a lot of dancing and Angela Lansbury as well as, um, what's his name? Tom, blah, 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 now I forgot his name. Uh, 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 the guy, Tom, uh, Dr. David, Brown. Um, uh, David Tomlinson. Tomlinson. There we go. We're having trouble with that guy's name. David Tomlinson. They had great physical humor in this because you know they have to interact with objects that aren't there and you know david tomlinson gets turned into a rabbit a couple of times and then when he would get turned back into a human he'd be there you know twitching his nose like a bunny and it just there's a lot of great physical humor in both actors in this as well so oh, i really enjoyed yeah. it yeah it, it really is um there's i mean when you watch it you will start to realize that yeah it's not mary poppins but you, but, <laughs> but you will soon realise why I think it's got the cult status that it now has. Um, yes. it, it's it's one of those movies that anybody can watch and enjoy. It, it's something that kids will will laugh at, but it's also something that adults will laugh at at the same time. And you know, and I think it is it, it's something that I we definitely miss a lot these days is comedies which are acceptable to both parent and child. Right, You know, we we, we make a lot of family, I mean, we, not we, but the world makes a lot of family movies still, but they don't make a huge amount of comedies. And so this is is something that will, if you're 50 years old, you'll laugh. If you're 20 years old, you'll laugh. If you're six years old, you'll laugh. And that's something which not a lot of movies can pull off. Right, exactly. That's so true. No, this is definitely a family film. And also, I think this is a nice um, one because so often I don't see many films where they show a lot of patriotism for their country and fighting for their country. So it was interesting to see, for once, an, a country that's not the United States saying, we're great, we're going to fight, we believe in this country, we're going to band together, and it was the American flag they were waving. <laughs> you know, so it was it's nice to see that. You know, I can appreciate patriotism from almost any country. And so I enjoyed seeing that as well. Yes, it is interesting in an American film to actually exactly. see the Union Jack flying everywhere, you know, which yes. is, uh, yes. although I, I should, sorry to our British listeners, I know it's not called the Union Jack, it's called the Union <laughs> Flag. I'm sorry, yes, I know, I know, I know, I know. Um, but um, but it, it's great. And there is a fantastic scene with her flying over the countryside on her broomstick yes, yes. with a tin helmet on, holding a sword yes. in one hand, the broom in the other, and the broom <laughs> has a Union Jack or a Union flag flying from it as she flies yes. around. So yeah, yes. it is it is very patriotic in, in that sense. But it's but I think it's fun patriotism. It's Oh it's, absolutely, not fanatical. No, yeah, not it, 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 it's, very, it's yeah. It's patriotism it's for a cause. And we all know right. that the cause against fascism was one of the mm-hmm. biggest causes that the world has faced in a very long time. So, um, yes. you know, mm-hmm. and, and obviously the amount of people who, you know, gave their lives or gave their limbs or gave their loved ones to stop that. Right. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, so I think anyone can be proud of, you know, if, if they help stop fascism. So, you know. Absolutely. So, yeah. so hats off. Uh, that, that's all good. Absolutely. And although this is uh, this movie does have war themes in it, I like that there is um, fighting, but no one is seriously injured or killed in this movie. So it is, like I said, it's still very family friendly, but it still has that message, and it still has you know family and humor and music and animation. I mean, there's it's it's a really lovely movie. It's really nicely put together. Oh, most definitely, you can sit down as we said with the whole family and watch this. Yes, but yes. Even, even if you're 25 and you live alone or in a shared house. Trust me, get yourself, uh, <laughs> what, what is it, a bottle of champagne and a box of donuts or whatever you happen to be into, um, and seriously, you'll like this. It's it's like Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. You can be 21 and love this movie, you know. it's it, there's, there's no age restriction to it. That's what's so beautiful about it. Yeah. There's only one thing in this movie that made me wince a little bit. There is one scene where... Um, a rabbit gets picked up by the ears. I'm like, no, what are you doing? But that's just me. So, but I'm yeah. sure. Yeah. Only so only if you're like a super over the top, you know, <laughs> animal lover and you hate to see any kind of cruelty, but no, 
there's i'm sure the rabbit was fine but i was like you can't pick a rabbit up by its ears what are you doing so yes yeah, so i don't i don't so i don't know a lot about rabbits i never had rabbits as pets when i was growing up we always had dogs but um the i don't think you really are meant to pick a rabbit up by its ears are you that's sort of <laughs> by the ears no and they do actually do that in this movie for a swift moment because they're just like get out of the way rabbit and i'm like no you can't do that but just wanted to throw that out there this movie is from 1971 you won't see something in a movie like that today unless they were establishing that somebody was a you know a villain or an evil character and this was one of the good guys that did it and i was like eh, 1970s what can you do well it's it's, it's a bit like the the very <laughs> Very famous movie, um, Doctor Doolittle. But of course, I'm talking about the original, not the remake with right. um, was it um, Eddie Murphy, um, the the very original with Rex Harrison. And uh, yes. um, I've mm-hmm. heard stories that apparently a lot of animals died during the filming of, of, of that. I've heard that. I've um, heard that. Not, not, I, I haven't yeah. investigated it, but I've heard that as well. And I'm just like, gosh, that's so, that's such a shame. And I'm happy that now we have standards in place that when you do see animals in film 99.9 percent of the time they're very well treated and not harmed or hurt in the process and there's that very odd percent where something's maybe an accident or somebody thought the camera wasn't running <laughs> but, I, I i believe the problem they had in dr doolittle was that um they had to sedate a number of the animals to do scenes uh so oh for instance, if, if you're going to have a conversation with a I don't know, like a badger or, or I don't know, what, whatever it is. Like, um, the, the problem is that the, you can't keep the animals still. They're wild animals, <laughs> right? So right. what they had to do is they had to sedate them. And apparently, from my understanding, they didn't often get the drugs correct in their amounts. And a number of animals died because they were oh, basically God. drugged to death. Um, oh my god! And I, I believe Terrible. that's yeah. I don't believe it. No animals were killed intentionally. Um, we're, you know, we're not talking <laughs> about like you know, like that movie, The Mole, that we we spoke about. You know, uh, the oh other god. week. Oh um, god! Oh the, god! The um, yeah. yeah, no, it was it was they were accidental. But of course, the the thing is that today that would never happen. Well, at least Thank we god. we <laughs> say that. But of course, there's that viral. Video which has been going around social media about the dog in the ice cold water. Oh, I know. Oh, God. Yeah, exactly. So, like I said, there's your point, <laughs> that point percent there where I'm just like, Rrr. yes, no, it well, still happens, unfortunately, but there are more safeguards in place now, so thank goodness. And again, there's really not anything to be upset about in this movie. I just wanted to throw that out there for anybody who's overly sensitive, anybody who owns a rabbit and watches this movie and like, goes, how come you guys didn't mention that somebody picked that rabbit up by its ears? <laughs> yes, and, and don't worry, from from all of our research and everything I know about this movie, no rabbits right. were killed in the making exactly. of this movie. So, exactly, uh, exactly. So we, 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 you know, we, we will exactly. say that. We will say that. And, and I know another reason why you like this movie, Warren. There's a scene where the children, well, there, that's a fun scene where they're basically um, – everybody's squatting in this house that people have abandoned and it's a really nice upscale house and they have a nursery and that there's a train set in that nursery just for Warren. When well, he comes to visit, so. yes, I wasn't <laughs> going to mention that, but now it's been brought up. How cool was that? They're, they're, they're yeah, ni- that was nice. They're, wasn't they're, it? They've actually got real 1940s clockwork model trains in this and they're, wow. and they're oh, the, wow. and they're the real deal. These are not, um, um, you know, these are real 1940s because, of course, everybody. Oh, wow. Yeah, these are not like, obviously, we live in a world now of train, model train sets, which are digital. You know, I mean, now a, a train right. has an mm-hmm. IP. Like my, my model train layout, okay, I've. Every train has an IP address. I have to bring up the address to get it started, and then this, you, oh, wow. you, and then you bring up all the sounds. So the engine starts and the smoke starts coming out, and oh, wow. you know, and, and all this sort of stuff. But back then, they were wind up clockwork trains. You wound them up, put them on the track, and they went around. And that's the <laughs> real deal, you know. And um, that's neat. Yeah. That's neat. So those were actual 1940s. Yeah, sets. yeah. This movie, this movie was made. This movie was made in 1971. So they actually went to that detail to get it right. That's really cool. Oh, and, and the other thing too that which is interesting is that the uniforms of the British soldiers are correct. 
Um, mm. the, the ribbons that they wear, like as in as the war's progressing, are correct. Like the war medals of the Home Guard of old wars are correct. And not only that, they're worn in the correct order. Now, oh, so, oh. so often in, and I hate to say this, in Hollywood films, they right. get foreign uniforms wrong or they get, <laughs> and they always get foreign medals wrong, right? They always right, get them wrong. Right. This movie doesn't. They're 100% <laughs> accurate. So um, the, the I only know that because of my past when I was in my 20s. We won't go into that. But the, the thing is that, um, you know, and, and you've got to take your hat off to the fact that the researchers of this got it right. That is cool. You know, yeah, I, I mm-hmm. really am. I was very impressed by that. Yeah, because so often they don't do the details at all. They just go here, just put a military uniform on them. Yeah, and especially if this is a Disney movie. You know, I mean, like, you would almost argue who right. cares if the uniforms are right? Who cares if the medals are right? But they actually went right, to the exactly. degree of getting it 100% correct. So, yeah, no, good <laughs> on them for that. Good on them for that. Uh, Definitely. Yeah, I mean, even the concept of they had an old general who was meant to be in charge of the Home Guard, and his rank was in Polish brass, but the current serving officer, you know, who arrives at the village to start the film, all of his rank is blacked out. It's it's actually in black. That's 100% huh. right, because huh. it used to be Polish brass. By the Second World War, it had been painted black. So... They got this stuff, it's just those tiny little details. They got correct. Wow. You know, they got and there, correct. And there is a lot of armor and, <laughs> and metals and weaponry and, yeah, uniforms in this movie. So it's really interesting to see that they got those details right. Oh, and when, when we say armor, we're not talking about tanks. We're talking about, <laughs> we're talking about medieval knights, just so people know. Just so people know, we're talking about knights, you know, knights yeah. with swords and maces and, and all this sort of stuff. So, uh, um, yeah, no, absolutely. The, the, the detail they went to is extraordinary. Absolutely Such extraordinary. Such so, a cute movie. So if we're, as we always do, are going to rate this on the Eric Roberts scale, um, okay. where are we going to put this one, Velvet? Okay, so as I said, this film, I did get a little tear in my eye watching this. I really was touched by this film. However, at the same time, I do find a little bit of the animation and the film techniques a tiny touch dated. So that does minimize my viewing pleasure just a little bit. And also the songs, I could take them or leave, and I just didn't find them memorable. I didn't find them catchy. didn't find that the songs really added much to the movie. So I'm going to drop the score a little again. But still, highly recommend checking this out. It's such a nice family friendly film so out of a possible five eric roberts i'm going to give this 3.5 erics okay that's pretty good um i'm actually going to go a little bit higher i'm going to give it four erics um out of five um the main reason is that yeah look i agree the music in this was not memorable you know it's Mm -hmm. not there were no songs that came out of this that you'd leave the cinema really singing or you would sort of say to yourself, oh, gee, I really want to go and get that album, you know, with all those right. songs. So mm-hmm. um, so, right. yeah, so, I do agree with that. Um, but other than that, I can't find a lot to fault with it. You know, it's mm-hmm. um, considering it was made in 1971, the special effects are absolutely amazing. Um, the, yeah, some of the animation with the people, Definitely not as good as what we're about to talk about next. Um, But then again, (laughs) there's, what, 17 years difference between the two films. Yes. Um, So, so yeah. So, look, I'll give it four out of five Eric's. All right. Nice. Cool. Check it out. Bed knobs and broomsticks. (laughs) And, And as we said, even if you don't want to check it out, still go to YouTube and look up bed knobs and broomsticks, football or soccer match. Trust me, you'll, 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 you know, you'll like that, even if you don't want to watch right. the whole film. So, all right, right. we will take a uh, quick break and uh, we'll be back with movie number two.
Now, our final film uh, for this podcast is from 1988, and once again, it is a mixture of live action and animation, and it is probably, I don't know if you'd agree, I, I think you'd agree with this, Velvet, probably the most famous movie of this genre, um, and that is Who Framed Roger Rabbit, and I know that this is a favourite of yours, Velvet. Yes, it is, actually. Um, again, if we ever compile an ultimate top ten list, this movie would definitely be in my top ten. I actually saw it in the theater in 1988 when I was eight years old, and I was, it makes me laugh. But I'll let you talk more about it, and then I'll talk more about my experience in the theater as an eight-year-old. All right. <laughs> now, the thing is that um, I, I don't – now, I, I was even wondering, do I even need to explain this film? Because I think a lot of people will know what it's about. But anyway, I'll just give it a really brief rundown. Now, it's um, uh, obviously from 1988, but it is set uh, actually at around about the same time as the last movie that we spoke about. Uh, oh, actually, no, sorry. I think it's actually set about 10 years later in the 1950s. Oh, um, oh no, this is actually uh, 1947. 1947. Oh, 1947. Hollywood. Okay, 1947. And um, the uh, now it plays on the idea that cartoons are real, and that the so all the cartoons that we watch, whether it be movies or uh, TV, uh, basically they're real, they're alive, they actually exist and interact with us as real people, but they all live in a place just um, sort of well in this weird place in Hollywood called uh, Toon. Or was it Toon? Toontown. Oh, Toontown. <laughs> Toontown. Oh, get that out eventually. And anyway, um, there are, it stars, uh, of course, um, um, oh, I forgot his name. <laughs> Help me, no Velvet. Problem. Bob, Hoskins. Bob Hoskins. Bob Hoskins. Bob Hoskins, who plays the character of Eddie Valiant, uh, who is a private investigator. Uh, but he doesn't really like the tunes as such, the cartoon people of this world, because his brother uh, was killed by one. So he's not really a big fan of them. But he finds himself as a private investigator being drawn into a huge conspiracy and crime uh, that's happened in uh, Toontown, where another Toon, uh, in this case Roger Rabbit, has been accused of murdering a human. Uh, in fact, a very famous big time sort of director, producer, and so forth in Hollywood. So he takes on, well, he doesn't really take on the case, but he gets involved in it and he realises that there is something not quite right here. And the good side of him, the good-natured side of him, uh, even though he's meant to be sort of like a almost a struggling alcoholic, if you like, since the death of his brother, looks into this and then becomes more and more and more involved with it and really then realises that something is afoot, and he tries to help Roger Rabbit, our cartoon rabbit, uh, from, uh, you know, this crime that he's been accused of. Now, while all of this is going on, there is a character called Judge Doom, who is basically a judge um, who is responsible for the area of where Toontown is. And he doesn't like the Toons and he wants to get rid of them. And we will find out his involvement in this conspiracy as the mov movie goes on. Um, and of course, this movie is extremely, I suppose, rememberable. Um, <laughs> Can't get my words out at the moment, Velvet. <laughs> um, uh, for, of course, the character of Jessica Rabbit, the oh, wife yes. of Roger Rabbit. Uh, now, Jessica Rabbit is not actually a rabbit. It's just that she has the surname of Roger Rabbit, who is a rabbit. She's a... <laughs> how would you describe her, Velvet? Um, she, is, she is sex in cartoon form. She is a stripper who doesn't take her clothes off. She is every man's sex dream just like but it's a cartoon it, it's just yeah uh, i got a funny story about jessica rabbit but i'll i'll let you tell more and then i'll get all to all to my little memories about so movie. <laughs> yeah so look that is is basically the um uh the idea of the film and that is that um 
Roger Rabbit and um, uh, and Eddie Valiant basically will join up to try to find out who did frame Roger Rabbit. And that is really our film, but it is an amazing mix of animation yes. and live action in a sense that we have uh, – they do both styles. So, for instance, um, Bob Hoskins will often – enter the animated world, but then we also have all the animated characters in the real world. So yes. unlike a lot of movies where what generally happens is it's either one or the other. So, for right. instance, in Mary Poppins, you had the animated characters in the real world. In right. We were talking about um, bed knobs and broomsticks. You have the real actors in the anime world. The difference with this right. movie is it does both. Yes. Yes. Yeah. This movie had over 40 drafts. So, I mean, they worked really hard on getting a decent script for this movie. And I love the overall story that they came out with this. So, um, I originally had the pleasure <laughs> and once in a lifetime chance of seeing this movie in the theater when I was eight years old. And so it came out in 1988. I was eight years old. And my parents, along with a lot of parents, thought this was a cartoon. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> exactly. It, it, which I think is so funny now because even as a kid when I went to go see this, like I remember it was me, a cousin, my father, and an uncle, and maybe a couple other um, outside family members, and we all thought this was a cartoon. Like they thought it was for kids. And one of the reasons why we thought this was, first off, this movie was rated PG. <laughs> and nowadays, if they were, were to make this movie, it would be rated PG-13. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> which... Which, but at the time, PG-13 didn't quite yet exist. I think it just within that year, they introduced the PG-13 rating, because actually that's the same year, I believe, the Monster Squad came out, and Monster Squad was given the PG-13. So that kind of gives you an idea. This movie has cussing, it has violence, it has sexual references, it has a lot of sex appeal. I mean, this is, yeah, this should at least be a PG-13. This should not be eight-year-old kids going to see this movie at all. No, there's, <laughs> so there's actually... That- yeah, there's quite a lot of violence in this, actually. Yes, yes. And so I remember being in the theater watching this movie, and the movie opens up with this great cartoon sequence and it introduces you to some of the characters. It introduces you to Roger Rabbit, and it introduces you to, um, I can't believe I just got the name of the baby, Baby, um, the baby, Baby oh, Herman. Excuse yeah, me, yeah. Baby, baby Herman. <laughs> baby Herman. So it's this great, like, five-minute cartoon sequence. So at first you really think it's going to be a cartoon, and it's your standard, typical kind of Looney Tunes, um, slapstick, you know, outrageous situations type of cartoon. But then it slowly starts blending in the real-world elements, and it's a little bit film noir. <laughs> so there's some murder, there's some mystery, there's some violence. And I remember as a kid watching this movie and just, like, getting to parts of the movie where I would be like, oh, uh-oh, I'm not supposed to be watching this, am I? And I remember when it very first showed Jessica Rabbit, and my father actually told me to cover my eyes. Oh, really? <laughs> just, because, <laughs> just because Jessica Rabbit came out on the stage. Because I think he thought she was going to do a striptease. <laughs> I, thought she, I think he thought she was going to do a striptease. And I remember like being like, why do I have to close my eyes? Just, just close your eyes. And then finally he was like, okay, okay, you can open your eyes. Because I think he thought she was going to do a strip routine. <laughs> and he was like, oh, shit. And then, like I said, they say wise ass. They say, um, they say a couple of cuss words. They say son of a bitch in this movie. And when you're eight years old, at least in American culture, like I, brought, I was brought up in a family when I was that age that even saying hell or damn was like saying fuck or shit. They were all on the same level. They were just not words that kids should be saying. They were not words that kids should be hearing in movies. And so hearing wise ass and son of a bitch in this movie was a huge deal. And I remember just feeling in the movie, I could feel the atmosphere around me. I could literally feel people like whispering and saying, Oh, I thought this movie was for kids. Like, yes. <laughs> like you could hear, you could hear it. So it just, it was, it was hilarious. You know, just how we found out very quickly. This is not a movie for kids, but it was also, 
we were the kind of people that, okay, you're here now, so you're just going to sit and watch the movie. We weren't going to leave the movie, and we weren't going to go ask for our money back. So it was kind of like, oh, well, we're here now, so <laughs> enjoy the movie. <laughs> well, I, I think that uh, this movie in Australia still holds, I believe, a PG rating. Um, but the, It does here, too. It does it's, here, yeah. too. Um, but it, it's – and I think – I don't know. I, I think in Australian culture – you really wouldn't have a problem with your kids seeing this, but I do understand right. in some other countries they might sort of say, right. no, this isn't really for kids, um, you know, right. because of the sexual innuendo, because of the... Oh, big time. You know, some of the, the sort of... Uh, I won't say swearing. I think I'll use your term, cuss words, you know, that are sort mm -hmm. of used in it. Right. But, you know, <laughs> in Australia, no, I don't really think that's really a, 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 so much of a big deal. <laughs> but, but you've got to remember, that's just a cultural difference between the United States in Australia, we're different countries, you know. Yeah, um, absolutely, um, absolutely. Even though I'm, of course, in Jersey, but um, uh, <laughs> um, uh, but the um, the 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 you know, yeah, I, I just don't think it's really a big deal. I don't really. I mean, would have been fascinated to see how it would have played in Europe because I think they would have been much the same as Australia. I don't think they would have right. had an issue yeah. with with any of it. I think they'd still classify it as a kid's film. I mean, for instance, the idea that they use the idea of playing patty cake, you know, patty cake, patty cake, baker's man, basically <laughs> is, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it, it's, 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 it's code for rooting, you know, or, uh, sorry, there's my Australianisms for coming out for sex. Yeah, yeah. Code for sex. It's code yes. for sex. So, um, you know, yes, so they do yes. hide a lot of stuff. Although there is an interesting scene with, um, Bob Hoskins, where he's with his mm -hmm. girlfriend behind the bar and he knows that there's going to be a big explosion, basically, because they've just given Roger Rabbit a shot of whiskey and um, mm -hmm. he doesn't react very well to alcohol. And, uh, <laughs> and you'll notice that Bob Hoskins ducks down behind the bar. His girlfriend's still standing there and he grabs her by the cleavage and pulls her down. Yeah, you know, and that's there's a scene. really quite saucy. Yeah. Yeah, and there's a scene in the movie that um, there's a there's a there's a character you know, there's a group of characters called weasels, and yes, they are weasels or humanoid weasels, and they're you know been tracked with um, hunting down Roger Rabbit and to bring him to Judge Doom for you know punishment. And there's a scene where they have you know his wife in custody, Jessica Rabbit, and she has like you know basketball cleavage. She has like ginormous you know cartoon boobs that, and they're like, oh, I'll check her, and the Weasel sticks his hand down in between her cleavage. Yes. And then, yes. And I'm like, okay, this is not for kids. <laughs> this is not for kids. But, it, and even, I mean, and they even take it a step farther because then, like, you know, he pulls his hand out and there's a, you know, trap on his hand, a little claw trap. And, you know, Bob Hoskins says, nice booby trap. And I'm like, okay, come on. Yeah, I <laughs> know. Is, you know, this is not for kids at all. So, uh, but I'm surprised this movie is so risque because, I mean, they actually got Warner Brothers and they got Disney to, you know, get along long enough to, you know, lend out their cartoon characters for this movie. And this movie has violence, it has cussing, it has sex, it has murder, it, it has, you know, I'm just... Wow, I'm just surprised. I'm just like, wow, well, but I love it. I well, love the, the interesting thing, movie. too, is that, of course, it's, I believe, and people can correct me if I'm wrong, the only time where Disney and Warner Brothers characters are together. Yes, yes. It's a humongous deal. It's a humongous deal. There's um, actually quite a few other cartoon characters they wanted to have in this movie that they just weren't able to secure the rights in time. Because, I mean... Yeah, there's just so many people in here. Betty Boop. I mean, there's obscure characters. There's mainstream characters. I I love this movie because every time I watch it, I'm like, oh, this first that that cartoon character's in there too. Didn't notice that one. Well, that's Didn't the thing. That one. I, I mean, the thing about this, which is amazing, is that this movie plays with the concept of cameos, but the cameos in mm -hmm. it are all animated. They're not. Um, yes. Live action. Yes. So, for instance, although they're not really part of the story, but we'll have cameos from Mickey Mouse. We have cameos yes. from, I think, Goofy. We have cameos from Porky Pig. Uh, we oh, have so Donald Duck. Um, we have Daff. I mean, Donald Duck and Daffy Duck in the same movie. You know, yes. uh, so in the same it, you know, scene, yeah, <laughs> in the same scene, yeah. It's it's insane. It's such it's so fun to watch this movie. Obviously, you do. 
you need to be a bit of a cartoon fan or else obviously you're not going to know who any of these fucking cartoons are and you're probably not going to care to be honest i don't know how well this movie stands on its own if you're not a cartoon fan to be honest because i've always loved i'm not like cartoon crazy but i do definitely have nostalgia factor for this film because I do love seeing all those recognizable cartoon characters together in one movie so, but yeah um, if it weren't for the nostalgia factor I don't know how this movie would affect me I might think it's a neat movie but I don't think I would be so endeared to it if I didn't already have an emotional attachment to the cartoon characters that are in it what do you think yeah I, I think if you're a fan of you know um, uh, traditional Disney cartoons and traditional Warner Brothers cartoons, then you definitely will love it. The fact that you get to see all these characters that you grew up with playing some pretty crazy roles, you know. So, um, mm-hmm. so, so I think that is very, you know, very good. And uh, uh, so, yeah, so I, I did like that because I am not really a huge fan of animation in mm-hmm. the sense of the more traditional Disney style animation, but I, I, but to you know, but I still grew up with it, you know, because I don't watch it today. Yeah. Doesn't mean I still don't have obviously long memories of it and, uh, right. and remember it all. So to see it all, you know, and, and in, in this mix of, of live action and um, uh, and anime, I think I think it was great. I, I think the movie, I think it worked really well, and they definitely pulled off what they were trying to achieve. Absolutely. And also we have to mention um Judge Doom excuse me, Judge Doom is played by Christopher Lloyd. This is- the third movie that you and I are reviewing together that has Christopher Lloyd in it. Yes. We've also reviewed One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest and his more recent film, I Am Not a Serial Killer. So that right there again is just positive proof of cult movie actor icon status i mean christopher lloyd he's been in so many iconic films and just he's 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 not just you know he's not just in cult films he's a cult film actor which is pretty cool that's a really neat title to have absolutely and he plays the role of judge doom so well Um, he scared the shit out of me when i was in the theater when i saw this when i was eight years old i was scared he scared me so bad he was a really frightening character for kids at least for me he was creepy as fuck you knew something wasn't right about the guy oh he was just dressed all in black just had those big ginormous white teeth and then he murdered he murdered a cartoon he murdered a tune in this, and that really upset me when I was a kid. So in this movie, they have something called The Dip. And so you thought you couldn't kill a cartoon? There's no way to kill tunes? Well, Judge Doom invented The Dip. It is basically a mixture of paint thinners, and he, just for no reason, just to flex his power, just to show what he can do, he picks up the cutest little squeaky shoe cartoon it's got a cute little face and it's just squeaking and he picks it up and he puts it in the dip and it dies but it's like squeaking and crying and it's in pain and i'm like i was really bothered by this when i was eight years old i was like <gasps> like he just murdered a cartoon for no reason and it was in pain it was so sad oh <laughs> i know and that's that's that, <laughs> and as that an adult vi- probably, i mean yeah, but that's that violence <laughs> element that's in this this movie. It's it's actually quite yes. violent, uh, you know. Yes. In, uh, you know, in that in that sense. But the the thing is that you know, obviously, we're talking about you know uh, his character, and he played it so well. But the mm-hmm. interesting thing is, what did you, uh, of course, think of Bob Hoskins in this role? I love Bob Hoskins. I love Bob Hoskins. He makes me laugh so many times in this movie. First off, he's an alcoholic. Again, this is not a movie for kids at all. So don't be, don't think, oh, it's a cartoon. It's going to be stupid or it's for kids. No, this is totally for adults. So he, first off, he has a drinking problem in this to the point where so many people in the movie, when they run into him, they either say he smells like alcohol or they make jokes about him being an alcoholic. So, and the fact that he's always so grumpy and he hates cartoons he, and he, you know, hates being around them. But then it, but I love how in this movie you learn about his background through photos and newspaper clippings in his office. So it turns out not only has he had a brother that's been murdered by a tune and that's why he's, you know, 
hating all cartoons right now. But he, he and his brother grew up in a circus with their father. So this guy used to be a circus performer, and then him and his brother became police officers. And the reason I bring this up is later in the film, he puts that <laughs> past yes. experience and those skills to use. <laughs> and I love it. And it's one of those things, if you're not paying attention to the background, and they make it really easy for you to see, it's on the desk, and you don't read it, you're going to miss these little clues that really enhance your viewing experience and understanding of this character. But yeah, I love Bob Hoskins in this. He was so good. Well, it's interesting. He wasn't the first choice. Um, right. You know, the, I mean, apparently they originally wanted Harrison Ford. Um, and, and I think that that would have been hmm. a mistake, actually, because I think Harrison Ford almost would have just had a lot of those sort of... I, I don't think he would have carried it off. You You... Um, to the, the, the degree that Bob Hoskins did. Um, the other thing, too, is the second choice was Bill Murray. That I could see Bill Murray doing this role. I could see him, him doing it. I could, well, I, I don't know. See, I could see Bill Murray doing it now. I don't know if I could mm-hmm. have seen Bill Murray doing it in 1988. He was too. I, okay. I think. I think in 1988, Bill Murray was too outrageous. He was too. You know, he was just. Okay. He was just like he was this sort of you know crazy comic. Um, you know, with the characters he would play, and mind you, right. I love. I just absolutely adore Bill Murray. He's so good. Yes. Um, but but I actually think that Bob Hoskins, they actually got. Even though he might have been number three on the list, he was actually the right choice. Yeah, I think he's really perfect for this. There's a couple of other people that they wanted that they thought about giving his role to. So in, instead of it being Bob Hoskins, they say that Tim Curry, yes, from Rocky Horror Picture Show, Tim Curry actually auditioned for the role of, of Judge Doom. And they uh, said his performance w- of Judge Doom, yep. his performance was so frightening <laughs> that they were. They said it was just too creepy for the movie. <laughs> I was like, wow. Wow. Although- I remember... Uh, Tim Curry's also done uh, Pennywise the Clown from Stephen King's It, and a lot of people cite that as a very scary <laughs> performance. Although I, I have to admit, I really could have seen him in that in that role, though. I really could. Uh, I, I think could I think he would have been too. he would have been great. He would have been great. Yeah, I think so too. I think so too. They also even considered Paul Rubens, better known as Pee Wee Herman, for the role of Eddie Valiant. <laughs> I'm like, wow. Uh, no, I, that I, don't, I can't see at all. Yeah, I can't see no, that at all. No, I, I, <laughs> no, I, I couldn't weird. have seen that working somehow. I mean, I, I can't I, see I, that at all. I mean, I realise he wouldn't have played it as Pee Wee Herman. You know, he would have played it differently. Right. But, but even so, I'm just uh, Bob Hoskins. I mean, the, the the thing about Bob Hoskins is he's not tall. You know, he's, he's a very stocky guy, and he just and that idea of the you know the what is it the gumshoe? You know the the, the street dete- <laughs> the street detective with an alcohol right. problem, and he's got a his girlfriend's a local bartender. You know, and 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 I sort of thought it just it all worked in together. It was just perfect. You know, um, yeah, just <laughs> I, I just thought it was perfect the way that all worked. Yeah, no, um, and also um, the voice of Jessica Rabbit. Um, at the time, it was uncredited. She was voiced by Kathleen Turner when she was nine months pregnant. Wow. <laughs> I was like, wow. Yeah. yeah, I was like, wow. Now, they had somebody else do her singing voice, but the actual, like, speaking parts was, was Kathleen Turner when she was nine months pregnant. And I always thought that was an interesting fact. But speaking of the tunes in this movie, wouldn't you love to visit Toontown? I love when Eddie Valiant finally kind of has to go into Toontown to, like, track down this lead and, you know, find this murderer, bring him to justice. And, like, what happens when you go into Toontown? All the cartoons come out and start singing a song. The cartoon sun is shining. The trees are dancing. Little hummingbirds are saying your name. Hi, Eddie. Hi, Eddie. Hi, Eddie. (laughs) And then all of a sudden the craziness ensues. (laughs) Then the craziness ensues. (laughs) But, but, But I also love the concept that when you enter Toontown, all the laws of physics and stuff go out the window. Oh, so, big time! Like, so big Bob, Bob Hoskins is in there, and he walks out. <laughs> he walks out the door of a building, and of course, it's on the edge of the building, so he's now floating in thin air. But he doesn't start to fall until he realizes he's floating in thin air, <laughs> and, and then even his body starts to act like a cartoon. It's like, uh, and then he falls, and his hat still stays there, and he has to grab his hat and go down. So. 
It's like even the laws of <laughs> physics even change when you enter, you know, uh, Toontown. So that was really well done. I love that. Yeah, if you, you know, I would love to go to Toontown if it was real. Obviously, don't get me wrong, people. I know Toontown's not real, but I'm saying, oh, really? I would love to go really? To I did, I didn't <laughs> just realize. Just in case, just in case somebody's like, "What the fuck's up with Velvet?" No, okay. If, okay, I would love to go to Toontown, but I definitely would take the guided tour the first few times I go to get a hang on the rules and get smart to the tricks that the tunes play on you. Because if you go in there uninitiated, you're gonna have some <laughs> uncomfortable shit happen to you (laughs) yes and you have to be very literal so if you're flying and you're falling out of a building and you know you happen to see bugs bunny on one side and mickey mouse on the other side and you know they've got their parachutes on they haven't pulled the cord yet and you know if you're going to ask them hey do you have an extra parachute that way you don't have to hit the pavement make sure you ask for a parachute don't ask them if they have a spare yes i know (laughs) Did you get something quite different? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Don't assume they speak the same lingo you do. But yeah, no, I love this movie. It literally makes me laugh out loud. I'm just, uh, just so many of the little cartoony things. Oh, and one of the things they did really well in this movie is they did this as much as they could where they tried to make people and objects interact with the cartoons as much as possible. So that like, you know, if a tune hit, you know, a glass, the glass would break or fall. Or I mean, you, there was actual interaction between live objects and the cartoons that they, ha- I mean, I just, I thought that was really well done. You'll even see in the background, like when they're running out of buildings, uh, rod, you know, cartoons will run into people and the people get knocked down or knocked into each other because they got bumped into by a cartoon. I was just like, really attention to details really nicely done in this oh, movie. A- absolutely. It's, it's like we said with the last film, the attention to detail was so good. This is once again the same. The attention to detail on this is quite extraordinary. Um, yes. You know, it, it really is incredibly well done. And the other thing too, just from a plot line, we never really know who are the goodies and who are the baddies until the end of the film. So it, yes. it, it does, even the plot does actually hold you. You know, there is actually yes. more to this than just the interaction of anime and live action. The the plot, the story will actually keep you guessing all the way yes. through the film. Yes. And I like that for this movie, it is called Who Framed Roger Rabbit, that they took a neutral character. They create a whole new cartoon character or well, a couple of new cartoon characters for specifically for this movie. And they did a good job of, you know, you have all these other well-established you know, popular for decades, cartoon icons, Bugs Bunny, Mickey Mouse, etc. But yet the lead character is a brand new cartoon character named Roger Rabbit. And they I love this character. I really feel for Roger in this movie. I really like him. And he's so innocent. And I always love it when he says, please. He, he always goes, please. Yes, like he's just so cute, and of course everybody loves Jessica Rabbit because she's beautiful, and I love that she loves her husband so much. It's so funny. It's such a cartoon relationship because here she is, like you know, this beautiful woman married to this goofy ass rabbit. <laughs> and it's, it's a total yeah. cartoon relationship. <laughs> it's although I don't know we've 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 seen Hollywood uh, relationships like that before. <laughs> uh, don't you remember one of Julia Roberts's husbands? Oh, gross! Ooh, don't go there. You know who I'm talking about, don't you? I do. I do. I do. Uh, I you know. So, you know. <laughs> they say it's an urban legend. I hope it is. Um, well, I also like. I also like Baby Herman because I. Oh, that's the other thing I love about this movie is that. As you've mentioned, these are cartoons in the real world. So these are the ones that choose to hang out in our side of, you know, life and our reality. They're working cartoons. So some of them are actors or entertainers, but they're also like working as bar staff, wait staff. You know, they're working as bouncers at clubs. I mean, I think it's just hilarious the way they're integrated into our society. You got Betty Boop working as a waitress in a bar. You got Roger Rabbit's on a film set filming a cartoon. And Baby Herman, he's like the one that first blows your perception of cartoons in this movie. 
because he looks like a baby, but he's basically a 50 year old man in a baby's body and he smokes cigars when he's not on camera. <laughs> yes. <laughs> just, I love it. Well, it, it's, a, it. It, it's a little bit like, I mean, I've heard some people talk about the fact that there's, um, there's almost a bit of an element of apartheid to this film. Um, mm. you, you know, the idea mm. that you've got all the tunes live in this, town together on the outskirts of the real town and mm-hmm. then they're allowed to come in to work they're, they're allowed to you know pour your drinks do stage shows make movies but they have no rights they're not allowed to mm-hmm. vote there's no such thing as you can murder a tune it's just a tune mm-hmm. can't murder a person um so right. they, they have zero rights and in many ways this is 1988 right right at the end of apartheid mm-hmm. Um, in right. South Africa. So this is almost right. a bit of a statement of, of South Africa. I've heard a lot of people mm. say that. I don't really I can see that. I mean, I can I see can how see I can see how people draw the conclusion, but I really don't think that's what this movie is about. I think that's, that's actually That's what I was getting ready to say. Yeah, yeah I, that's what I was getting ready to say. I, I, think I can see that, but I don't think they meant that with this movie no, at all. No, I, I don't think there's no. anything political in this at all. I think this is just um, people writing what they want to see into in it after it's over. Um, right. You know, you know, like there are some very famous films that really did have some statements about uh, politics and lifestyle at the time, um, mm-hmm. even though people didn't realise it. I mean, for instance, The Wizard of Oz is a classic example. There's obviously mm-hmm. a huge amount of politics written into that that people didn't know at the time. Um, but I think this movie, no, it just happens to be coincidence that people can right. read that in afterwards. Yeah. Right. I agree. I agree. There is actually um, something where they do um, kind of like the old school clubs. And I, th- they do do this in the movie. Like there used to be, um, for example, there used to be like the Harlem Cotton Club where it would have an all African-American staff, you know, entertainers, you know, bartenders, wait staff. But the only people who were allowed to be customers were white people. And that's just and they do that on purpose. It was just the way it was. And they do this in this um, movie, too, because there's the ink and paint club where yes. they only serve humans. But all the entertainment, all the, you know, all the staff of the club are cartoons. And I don't really know. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a nod to segregation. But this was also just a theme that was common at that time that. Uh, it, among humans, it would have been segregated by race, whereas in this movie, it was segregated by, I guess, species. Uh, is that what you would say? Well, <laughs> I suppose. Cartoon, one person's human. <laughs> in many, in many ways, even maybe we're actually contradicting ourselves from what we originally said. Maybe there is some politics in this, you know. So um, yeah, so uh, you know, yeah, with the, I mean, the, it's definitely a reference because remember, this movie's supposed to take place in. In 1947, Hollywood. So this wasn't, you know, this was before the civil rights movement. So it's interesting that this cartoon takes place during a time that, yeah, uh, not everybody had equal rights. So I guess that would extend over to cartoons. <laughs> yes. So you know, m- maybe it is. There is actually a um, a statement in there after all. I mean, look, I-, I don't really know, but um... but it's it's subtle. It's it's subtle though because this movie is overall. Basically, you know, a murder mystery, you know, mixed genre live action animation film. But evidently they threw in just a tiny smidge of politics. But there's a lot of stuff in this movie that should not be there. For example, I mean, when they originally released this movie on VHS, there's a scene where Jessica Rabbit gets thrown out of a car. You know, there's just like a little car accident. She gets thrown out of the car and like she lands with her legs spread and there's literally three frames where she's not wearing any panties. So you could see her cartoon panani if you paused it right on that oh, part. Now, and, uh, yeah, don't yeah, go. This I'm is sorry. true. This is not even not even urban legend. This is true. So in subsequent releases, I mean, once this got discovered, they've taken that out. So now on DVD and stuff, you can't see that. Now she is wearing panties, but I mean, there's <laughs> there's a couple of things like that in this movie where before we had DVD and they were just putting all kinds of naughty stuff in there. Because I, I, had, I had heard this, and uh, it's interesting that, you, you know, you, you, you know it's, it is true, um, mm-hmm. is that, yeah, I'd mm-hmm. heard about the fact that there's actual nudity in this movie, but it only mm-hmm. it takes place, you know, as you're saying, in two or three frames. It's so yeah. quick that you can't actually really see it, but it, right. if you slow the movie down in the original mm-hmm. edits anyway, it's right, actually yes. there. There's actually 
cartoon nudity in it. But as, as, as you said, it's only for two or three frames. It's it's super quick. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, this movie is, I love it to death. It's just amazing that so many people haven't given it a chance because they think it's a cartoon. And I'm like, no, you don't realize this is, it's not a porno. It's not an adult film, but it is definitely for adults. This is not a kid's movie whatsoever. <laughs> well, I, I, I mean, I'd, I'd say it's still fine for teenagers, yeah, no, totally. But no, not eight years old is what I'm saying. Because yeah. I saw this when I was eight, and that was totally inappropriate. <laughs> yes, I, I, I would suggest that, yes, uh, yeah, 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 teenagers fine. Be a little but, yeah, older. Yeah, yeah, be a little yeah. older. But, yes, no, and, no a, a, absolutely. I, w- I would actually agree with that. I, I, I would definitely and agree with that. also, I mean, like, the weasels are walking around with live ammo. They're not walking around with cartoon guns. They're walking around with live real-world guns shooting shit. And I'm like, well... Wait, why are they shooting guns? Because if they hit a person, they're going to kill a person. Yeah, a I know, I know. If they hit, if they hit a cartoon, nothing's going to happen. But I was just like, wow, this movie, I love it. But it's just, the more I watch, the more I'm always like, oh my God, this is so dark and so crazy. People getting murdered, cartoons getting murdered. Oh, and oh, um, one of my, another thing I love about this movie that I think is really funny and really clever is the character of... Um, Acme, what's his name? He, they give him a first name in this movie. Oh, the, yeah. um, I've um, let me get it really quick. Marvin, Marvin yeah. Acme. In, in any of the Looney Tunes cartoons, any kind of products, props, anvils, yeah. magnets, it's always the Acme company. So I love in this movie that we get to meet Mr. Marvin Acme, and he's a hoot, a real prankster. And I just, but I think it's really funny that they actually gave that the company president of a face in this movie and we get to meet him and he ends up becoming a really important character in this movie. But yeah, I thought that was funny. So if you ever wondered what Acme looks like, you get to see him. You get to see him. And he's a man. He's a man. Yep. It's not a cartoon. He's a man. Yep. (laughs) So no, no, it's definitely one. I mean, I'd, I'd highly recommend it. Uh, it's, uh, as we said before, it's, it's a, it's a gumshoe movie basically, but it's, um, but it, but it's, it's just, they've done something totally different and they've, they've cross genre, you know, live animation, sorry, live action with animation. But the actual Mm -hmm. story is just your typical everyday gumshoe type movie. Um, yes. But just, yes. That, but just that they've got animation in there. So, so that's yes. the thing, even though you've got the animation in there, it's, if you like gumshoe movies, well, here's one for you. It's just that it's done <laughs> differently, you know? Um, and also the performances by Bob Hoskins and Christopher Lloyd are very excellent, very well done for this movie. I can't see anybody else playing their roles, but them no, in, I agree. in this movie. I agree. The casting, yeah. they, I mean, they may have dealt with other people originally, but I'll tell you what, where they ended up was spot on. Absolutely spot yes. on. Yeah. Absolutely. No, most definitely. All right. <laughs> so it's that time we're going to rate it. <laughs> So, yes. where are you going to go, Velvet? Okay, well, definitely a cult classic. I love this movie. It has aged slightly, but at the same time, this movie took place in 1947, but it came out in 1988, but based on the technology of 1988, still very ahead of its time, very well done, but it still has aged just a slight bit. So, out of a possible five Eric Roberts, I'm going to go ahead and give this a 4.5 Eric's. Okay, that's excellent. Um, I'm actually going to give it the same score as I did last time. I'm going to give it four Eric's out of five uh, because I think it's a really good film. It's a great use. I mean, one of the best, you know, intermixes of, of animation and live action that I've seen. Um, a couple of things which, yeah, I don't know. But uh, so, yeah, I reckon about four, four out of five Eric's. It's very, very good. And I would highly recommend people see it. Awesome. Excellent. So, um, all right. So there was a couple of different movies than we, we normally do. <laughs> but but th- We were actually going to have a cartoon episode, but we ended up doing the, this mixture of live action and cartoon. So. <laughs> yes, but we, we probably will do an actual anime show at some stage. Right. Um, we, yeah. We've been playing with a whole heap of different ideas about different themes uh, for shows. Yes. Actually doing themed shows. Uh, so here's another thing, too. We've got some ideas in our heads.
ideas that we're playing with. Um, and we're even playing with ideas outside movies. We're even talking of thinking about ideas like television and, and so yes. forth. So we're playing with a whole heap of ideas here. But if you guys yes. out there have got any suggestions about themed shows, let us know. Send us a tweet. Send us an email. Let us know because um, – you know, there's a very good chance we're going to say, yeah, that's a great idea and we're going to do it. Um, I mean, a right, lot of films exactly. that we actually talk about on this movie have been sent to us by listeners. Uh, yes. You know, so we, we do listen. We ab- absolutely do. Yes. So, But we just thought, you know, this is the – a lot of people sometimes get a bit confused about this show. We are the cult movie show. We're not – the horror movie show. We're not the <laughs> B-grade movie show, you know. Although this mm-hmm. whole podcast may have its origins in B-grade cinema and horror and stuff, we're mm-hmm. talking about everything that's cult, you know. Right. Um, so, mm-hmm. you know, we're talk- going to talk about all sorts of films on this, and this was just uh, one of those. But I think next week we're coming back with some – uh, creature features and some horror, I think. So, um, <laughs> we're going to be Woo-hoo! back on Can't back wait. on track. Yeah. So, um, uh, and uh, and, oh, and I think next week too, we're going to have a friend of the podcast on as well. Oh, I'm uh, looking forward to that. Yeah, that's so, gonna be cool. Yeah, yeah. so that, that'll be that'll be quite cool. And uh, and we've also got some other special guests lined up for weeks and shows to come as well. Uh, so uh, no, it's all good. It's all good. So, do you want to take us out, Velvet? All right, let's do this. Okay, so be sure to follow, follow us on our social media at Cult Movie Show on Twitter and Instagram at Cult Movie Show. You can tweet us or you can private message us if you have any suggestions that you'd like us to review. If you have a short film you'd like us to check out, go ahead and tweet us or private messages. You can also email us if that's more convenient for you. You can email us at Cult Movie Show at gmail.com. You can follow me on my personal social media. I'm Velvet Rose, and on my so- social media, Twitter and Instagram, please be 18 years or older because I do post adult content. You can follow me at OMG, it's Velvet. You can also follow my co host here, Warren. He is Martini Super Dry on Twitter at Martini Super Dry. All right. And did I forget anything? Um, oh, <laughs> I'll just let you a, take it so. Uh, remember, however you listen, um, remember we are available on both iTunes and YouTube. Uh, it's simply just the cult movie show. It's pretty easy to find uh, because um, I know we've got some people who who don't like who iTunes. If you don't like iTunes because you're Windows people, you can use mm-hmm. um, YouTube, which is Google-based. So you've got we've got both options for you there. Um, also, um, of course, uh, always thanks to Alana Evans for supplying the music. Uh, always want to say that. And, of course, um, also thank you to Only Funny To Us OFTU Podcast. They're sort of like a um, bit of a sister brother show have helped us a lot. And fingers <laughs> crossed, if everything works, we'll have Cliff from Only Funny To Us on next week to help us Woo-hoo! review some films. So that should be – I'm looking forward to that because Cliff's a great guy. In fact, um, if you've been listening to this show since day one, you will have heard Cliff been on before. He's actually been on two shows before. Nice. Um, so this will be his third appearance. So looking forward to that. I think that is everything. Excellent. Cool. All right. So it was podcast 35. Is that right? I hope yep. that's right. <laughs> and uh, so thanks for listening. Um, we'll be back, of course, next week with number 36. And uh, so uh, stay safe and uh, we'll talk to you again. Or we'll, I don't know, but talk to you. I don't know. We'll podcast <laughs> to you, whatever it is. <laughs> um, uh, next week. So, uh, yeah, uh, we'll uh, speak next week. All right. Take care, everyone.